Hey Sagittarians, how's it going? This is Maxine Taylor, and I've got your forecast for June 2020. Um, interesting forecast, let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, let's start with Mars, the planet of passion and energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mars is what you fight with and fight for, and it's in the fourth house of family home and family. So you're throwing yourself into domestic issues. Are you buying a house? Are you renovating a house? Are you selling a house? Or are you having a knockdown drag out with your brother-in-law? Just kidding, of course. Uh, but your family's gonna come first to you. I remember you'll fight with them and for them. So being home right now can be very important to you, uh, which is really cool. Now, on the 27th, it moves into the fifth house of what I call fun and games. It's time to party. It's time for you to enjoy yourself. Um, and said, you know how. It's terrific. Mars in the fifth says, I want to have fun. Uh, the fifth house also deals with children. And so you're going to put your children first. Why? Because they're going to insist that you put them first because they're putting themselves first. So there's a, a lot of entanglement there with kids. Um, nevertheless, you're still ready for fun. So my suggestion is that you go for it. Enjoy yourself. Now let's jump over here to the sun, the giver of life, the center of our life. It's in your seventh house of relationships. How fun is that? You are attracting people to you who they're making themselves the center of their lives. And that's fine with you because you're making them the center of your life as well. It works beautifully. So get out there and be with people. Now, I know that we have social distancing and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you can still interact with other people, whether online or in person. So you're ready to get out there and be with people, but Venus, the pink planet, is retrograde in that house. Normally, Venus in the fifth and the uh, seventh house, I would say, is great for meeting somebody special, for enjoying people, and you will enjoy people. Uh, if you are partnered or married, uh, this is really cool uh, from the standpoint of just enjoying that other person. But because it is retrograde, uh, it doesn't completely deliver. You know what I mean? It's unsettled. So your relationships can be somewhat unsettled. Venus is gonna go direct on the 25th of the month. Now it's going to stay in the shadow of the retrograde till the very, very, very end of July. Um, but after the 25th, you'll find that your relationships ease up, yay. Also, the sun is in your seventh house until the 20th when it moves into your eighth house of other people's money, joint finances, secrets, uh, joint projects relating to money. You can raise money for other people. Um, also your ego, the sun, will be undergoing a transformation and you are a psychic detective looking beneath the surface at what is really going on. You'll want solitude and privacy during this time, which is interesting because Venus stays in your seventh house so that you want relationships as well. We'll do, do both. Mercury's in your eighth house. So Mercury's what we think about and talk about. Okay. You're analyzing things very deeply. Uh, Mercury goes retrograde on the 18th. And that's when everything really gets confused. Why? Because from the 18th till the 25th, both Venus and Mercury are retrograde. And that's the tag team I've been talking about for a while. Everything is totally un uh, unstable, confused. 
uh, in your case, in relationships and other people's uh, secrets or other people's money um, or just secrets in general. After the 25th, when Venus goes direct, I think things will loosen up a little bit. But that weekend there, very, very important. Uh, we will not know who to believe, so my suggestion is that you listen to your source. Source will never let you down. Okay. Your thinking undergoes a change while it's in the eighth house also. So be open to new ideas. Now, we've got two eclipses in June. The first eclipse is on the full moon, the sixth, excuse me, the fifth of June. I think I need my glasses. Oh, that's much better. The 5th of June here in the United States, wherever you are, it might be a different, it might be the day before or the day after. It's in 15 Sagittarius 34 in your first house of your solar chart. And first house is me first. I'm doing what I want, when I want, how I want, because I want. Cool. Look at your birth chart. See where 15 Sagittarius 34 is. You might say, I don't have a birth chart. I don't have a copy of it. I got you covered. Go to my website, MaxineTaylor.com, and you'll find a new notification. I will send you a copy of your actual birth chart. Now, it's not the interpretation. It's not a question and answer thing. It is simply a snapshot of your birth chart. Uh, and it's on a, a, a chart that is easy to understand. That will, uh, I'm, I'm, I want everybody to be able to afford to get a copy of their birth chart. So it's $5, I think it's a good investment. And you'll be able to plug in to your birth chart as well. The solar chart and the birth chart work hand in hand. So the full moon, the lunar eclipse, as you say, and I'm doing it my way. And I hope you do. Of course you will. Then, two weeks later, after the full moon uh, comes to a head in your first house and you're saying, I'm doing what I want, when I want, how I want, because I want, the new moon is when energy starts growing again. It's in your eighth house. And it's a solar eclipse. And, and it's in zero cancer 21. It's on the 21st of June um, here in the United States. So the new moon starts energy flowing again in the eighth house that I've just described. So there's your June forecast. Fascinating, don't you think? So till next month, when we pick up where we left off, and keep in mind that these July, e these June eclipses will be strongest September and October. We've got another eclipse in July. So till then, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Peace out. <laughs>